This program is coming to you tonight from a room in a building named after a billionaire. And that building is located in the middle of a campus of buildings named after that same billionaire. Rockefeller Center was named after John D. Rockefeller, America's first billionaire who lived four blocks north from where I'm sitting right now. Billionaires have always loved New York. But now that Donald Trump is facing more than half a billion dollars in civil judgments against him in New York courts, the Fox Propaganda Channel, which is located in Manhattan, a block away from Rockefeller Center, wants you to think that New York is a bad place to do business because it has laws. New York was already a loser state. Like California is a loser state. There are many loser states because of policy, high taxes, uncompetitive regulation. It was already on the top of the list of being a loser state. I would never invest in New York now. Well, New York doesn't exactly need his money because, among other things, New York has more billionaires than it knows what to do with. And most of the rest of those billionaires are in California, that other loser state, the richest state in the union, which has an economy that would rank as the fifth largest economy in the world if California were a country. The states that that guy calls loser states, California and New York, are always competing for the most expensive home sale in the country. The current winner is New York, where a billionaire bought an apartment five blocks north of John D. Rockefeller's old apartment for $238 million. $238 million to have a box in the sky with bathrooms and a kitchen. That's how much billionaires love New York, especially New York City, especially Manhattan, whose courts have visited more than half a billion dollars in judgments against Donald Trump just this year. No billionaire in Manhattan is going to leave because of what happened to Donald Trump in court. Billionaire Mike Bloomberg is staying. You can't find a prouder New Yorker than Mike Bloomberg, who served three terms as the city's mayor, the only billionaire mayor in American history. In fact, New York, New Yorker Mike Bloomberg was the richest elected official in American history. And nothing can get him to leave New York City. My first guest tonight, the governor of New York, was an aide to New York's senior Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan. When Senator Moynihan got fed up with the kind of talk you just heard from that guy on Fox about New York, and Senator Moynihan started publishing a report every year to show how much more money the state of New York contributed to the federal government than it got back from the federal government. And in that report, New York really was a loser state, which is to say the state of New York lost money because of its membership in the United States of America. And the state of California lost money because of its membership in the United States of America. And the states that that guy called winner states later in that interview all really were winner states because they won money from the United States Treasury, meaning they all collected more money from the federal government than they ever paid in. The state that that guy went on to praise, the states that he really praised, were North Dakota and West Virginia, two of the least desirable states to live in according to their population numbers. In a country where we are all free to choose where we live, North Dakota ranks 48th in population. West Virginia ranks 40th. No one on Fox wants to live in North Dakota, and no one on Fox wants to live in West Virginia. I've been to both of those beautiful states more than once, and they have entranced me by their beauty and the charm of their people. But I, for one, couldn't make a living in either one of them. In fact, most people you see on Fox live in New York, where Fox has always been headquartered and will always be headquartered. The state of New York has been supporting the federal government from the beginning, first by the collection of tariffs in the largest port in the country, where tar when tariffs were the largest source of the federal gover government's revenue at first. And then throughout the 20th century and 21st century, through the income tax, 
when New York had more top income taxpayers than any other state in the union. Interstate highways in Alabama were not paid for by the people of Alabama. New York City subways were not paid for by the people of Alabama or the taxpayers of North Dakota or the taxpayers of West Virginia. New York City is economically the most dynamic city in human history. And if the laws of New York enforced against Donald Trump cause him financial pain, that won't stop any billionaire or any business from thriving in New York as they always have and always will. Donald Trump wants to make New York a loser state in another way. Donald Trump and the Republican Party want the women of the state of New York to lose the rights that they have to control their own bodies and their own health and that the rights that they've had for more than 50 years. Now that the judges Donald Trump appointed to the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, Donald Trump wants to overturn the law of New York State and the law of California and the law of Massachusetts and the law of 30 other states that guarantee women the same protections that they have had under Roe versus Wade. Here's Donald Trump with Tim Russert on Meet the Press in 1999. Well, look, I'm... I'm very pro-choice. I hate the concept of abortion. I hate it. I hate everything it stands for. I cringe when I listen to people debating the subject. But you still, I just believe in choice. Sixteen years later, Donald Trump said this. I've evolved on many issues over the years, and you know who else has is Ronald Reagan evolved on many issues. What happened is friends of mine years ago were going to have a child and it was going to be aborted, and it wasn't aborted, and that child today is a total superstar, a great, great child. And I saw that, and I saw other instances, and I am very, very proud to say that I am pro-life. And then came the Chris Matthews moment. Do you believe in punishment for abortion, yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. And then Donald Trump said this. Do you want to see the court overturn Roe v. Well, if we put another two or perhaps three justices on, that's really what's going to be, ha that will happen. And that'll happen automatically, in my opinion, because I am putting pro-life justices on the court. I will say this, it will go back to the states, and the states will then make a determination. Well, he was right about overturning Roe v. Wade. The New York Times is reporting that Donald Trump is now privately discussing a federal abortion ban that he would sign into law as president. And so, as of tonight, voters have 259 days to understand the stakes. In the presidential election on this issue, Donald Trump will sign a national abortion ban into law if he is elected president and Republicans control the Congress. And Joe Biden will veto a national abortion ban if he is reelected and if Republicans control the Congress. Make no mistake about it. If Congress passes a national ban, I will veto it. Last week, in a special congressional election on Long Island, abortion rights was the clearest issue separating the winner from the loser. Thinking about supporting Republican Mozzie Phillip? Listen to what she just said on abortion. I have a faith on the Supreme Court and make the right decision. You heard it. Mozzie thinks overturning Roe v. Wade was the right decision. New Yorkers can't trust Mozzie to protect abortion rights. Vote for Tom Swazi. Tom Swazi became the Democratic nominee in that special election after a meeting with New York's Governor Kathy Hochul, who then decided to endorse him and went on to raise $200,000 for the Swazi campaign. Tom Swasey will be sworn in as the newest member of the House of Representatives next week, and the Democrats will have one more vote in the House of Representatives.